Hi everyone, I'm Emil Stonic, editor at large at Bon Appetit, and this is Almost Every Way to Cook a Tomato. Who doesn't love a good tomato? There are so many delicious and different types to choose from. You've got sweet little sun golds, meaty romas, all different shapes and sizes and colors of heirloom tomatoes. But today, we're gonna to be taking a closer look at the good old fashioned beefsteak tomato. It's got a great balance of flesh to juice. It's a super tomatoey tomato. It's really versatile. And hey, stop. It's really versa. Hey, stop. Seriously, quit it. Ow. Stop. Quit. Ah. How do you like that? Okay, so we've got a lot of tomatoes and we're gonna try to cook them in every way that we can possibly think of. Stop doing that. Mom! Raw tomato. Well, you don't need to do anything to a tomato in order to eat it, so we're just gonna take it as it is. You know, a tomato is a fruit after all, so I'm just gonna eat it like an apple. Mmm, a little bit sweet, a little bit tart. You got a lot of textural contrast, the skin, the flesh, the seeds, the juice. Mm, there's a lot going on. If this was a peak summer tomato, I'd be perfectly happy eating it this way. Sliced and salted tomato. A little salt goes a long way. We're gonna slice this with a serrated knife, which is often easier. We're gonna place our slices on a rack, hit both sides with a little salt, and let it sit for 15 minutes or so to get some of the water out before we dig in. So, while it's been sitting, you can see that some liquid has kind of collected on the surface, and that's just the liquid from the tomato being drawn out. It looks almost redder. Mmm. So simple and delicious, this to me is the platonic ideal of a raw tomato. The salt both intensifies and concentrates the flavor, so it tastes extra tomatoey. Sometimes simple is best. Pan seared tomato. Okay, we're gonna cut out the core real quick, cut it in half, and pat it dry so it'll take a sear more easily. A little bit of oil in this hot pan, put our tomatoes in cut side down, and that, my friends, is a seared tomato. Mm, this smells really good. We've got some good caramelization of the tomato's natural sugars. Mm, nice, concentrated, complex flavor around those cut sides, but the rest is just raw tomato. We'd probably get more bang for our buck if we had sliced this tomato instead of having it to create more surface area. It's promising though. Fried tomato. We're gonna cut this into five slices, lay them out on paper towels and hit them with salt. Then let them sit for about 15 minutes to draw out some moisture. Okay, now we're gonna dredge them in flour, egg, and then breadcrumbs. Place them carefully into this hot oil. Give them a flip when they're browned. Hit them with a bit of salt and fried tomatoes. These are beautiful, nice crispy all around, and you can still see a smidge of the tomato in there. Cutting in, you can see the inside looks soft and pretty cooked. Mmm, that's great. The tomato is a bit watery, but the fat and the crunch really complement the flavor and texture of the fruit. Typically, this is done with unripe green tomatoes, but this would make a great appetizer during tomato season. Blanched tomato. I'm gonna take this paring knife and just make a little X mark, some salt, then carefully lower our tomato in. Let it sit for about a minute, then pull it out and transfer it to a bowl of ice water. Then I'm gonna use this knife to slide the skin off. So it was really easy to just slip the skin off. This exterior layer is a little bit mealy, but otherwise this tomato is totally raw inside, which is the idea. Mmm. Yep. It's pretty much a raw tomato without the skin. It's not adding all that much to the tomato eating experience, but if you wanted to use tomatoes in a recipe without the skin, it's a really easy way to get there. Tomato sushi. Now we're gonna put a blanched tomato to good use. We're gonna cut our tomato into pieces, remove the tough core, and then carefully cut out the inner membrane with the seeds and juices. Get those into a bowl and add some soy sauce, sesame oil, and let that marinate for about 15 minutes. Okay, the pieces are very delicate now that they've been marinating. I've got some warm sushi rice that I'm gonna form into a little nugget, and then carefully lay a piece of this tuna-looking tomato on top and compress it slightly. Eh, I'm no Jiro. So, I guess this is sushi insofar as it's on top of rice and kind of looks like fish. The rice is still warm and the tomato is cool, so there's some interesting contrast going on. It smells great. Mm. I mean, this is tasty. The flavor profile is great. The soy sauce really backs up the fruit's natural umami, but sushi it is not. Tomato tartare. We've got another blanched and peeled tomato, and we're gonna quarter it, cut the core out, and then remove the seedy parts and membrane, which will water things down, and then dice it up nice. We're gonna toss it with a bit of salt and olive oil, put this fancy ring mold on a plate, and pack this mixture in there to give it some shape, pull up the mold, and tomato tartare. 
This is more of a visual gimmick than anything else. Diced tomato made to look like beef or tuna tartare. The whole thing kind of falls apart. It doesn't adhere the way that a protein-based tartare would. Hmm. I mean, it tastes good with the salt and the olive oil, but this is basically just a bruschetta topping. Where's the bread? Raw tomato sauce. So this is the simplest possible raw tomato sauce. We're gonna grate it into a bowl, which is cool because the skin just kind of stays behind in my hand. A little bit of oil, a pinch of salt, stir that together, and we're done. Very rustico. The texture is loose and pulpy and uneven, and while we don't have any skin in there, we've still got some seeds. Mmm, that's really yummy. Just pure, clean tomato flavor with an appealingly rough texture. I don't think I want this with pasta necessarily, but it would be great with a bit of garlic and parsley as a sauce for fish or something like that. Tomato passata sauce. This is probably the simplest Italianate tomato sauce there is. Some wouldn't even call it a sauce. We're gonna cook these for just a few minutes until they're broken down and kind of soupy. And now we're gonna transfer our just cooked tomatoes to a food mill, which is gonna break down the tomatoes and keep any pieces of skin and seeds out of the finished product. And we're done. So there's no seeds, no skin in there, just totally smooth and homogenous. It's definitely a little bit loose since it didn't cook down long enough to get any water out. Mm. Definitely sweeter than our raw sauce because the seeds tend to lend a bit of bitterness. It's not bad, but this would make a better base for another sauce than a sauce on its own. Cooked tomato sauce. Similar but different. We've got our passata, but now we're going to get it back into the saucepan and let it cook down for the next 45 minutes or so to try to concentrate its flavor. Definitely looks concentrated. Get this into a bowl and we've got some tasty looking tomato sauce. Obviously, this doesn't have any of the aromatics that you would typically associate with a proper tomato sauce. It's darker and noticeably thicker, not nearly as watery. Mmm, wow, that tastes so different. Darker, deeper, way more concentrated and savory. This is definitely what I want as the base for my spaghetti sauce. Tomato paste. Let's take it one step further, shall we? We have our 45 minute cooked tomato sauce and we're gonna put it on this sheet pan and let it cook down in the oven for another four hours. Whoa, that looks like tomato paste, all right. This is noticeably darker and thicker than your store-bought tomato paste would be. It's almost gelatinous, and it's darkened a lot around the edges. Mm. Oh my gosh, this is actually so, so delicious. You know, store-bought tomato paste often has kind of a tinny, metallic kind of raw flavor, but this tastes incredible. Huge umami flavor. Tomato leather. We've got our cooked down sauce. We're gonna spread it out evenly on this parchment. Then we're gonna get the rack in there and let it go at 135 degrees for about 10 hours. Whoa, this looks wild. Like an ancient scroll made from dinosaur flesh or something. It's tough and leathery. It, it definitely feels like a dried out fruit roll up. Mm. Wow, your know, flavor is so concentrated that it actually really does taste fruity. Sweet, acidic. I bet you could convince somebody that this was raspberry or something like that. Definitely cool. Tomato powder. Let's take our dehydrator situation one step further. We're gonna slice our tomatoes, put them on this dehydrator rack, and let it go at 140 degrees for about 12 hours. Okay, these are good and dry by now. We've got our spice grinder, and we're gonna break our dried tomato slices into pieces and buzz them up. Voila, tomato powder. This has such a gorgeous, dark, ruddy, rusty sort of color, and it just kind of sticks to your hands like Dorito dust. Mmm, whoa, wild. It's really sweet, really fruity, ton of acid up front. This would be great as part of a dry rub or a popcorn seasoning or something like that. You know, it's a beautiful day. Let's take this party outside. Smoked tomato. We got a tomato. We got a smoker. We're gonna open this up, get our tomato in there, close it. All right, let's get our smoky boy out of there. Looks good. This is kind of freaky looking. The skin is starting to peel off and the whole thing does feel pretty soft. I mean, it was in there at a low temperature for a really long period of time. Inside's totally cooked, still pretty juicy. Mmm. Fair amount of smoke flavor on that outside, which is really nice with the tomato's natural savoriness. Torched tomato. We got our tomatoes. We got our searzol, which is just a modified blowtorch. We're gonna do our thing. All right. Okay, well, yeah, that looks done, I guess. We got a lot of color on those cut sides, but yeah, it's pretty much totally raw inside. Mm. Yeah, not particularly special. The browning doesn't have the same appealing smoky quality that our charred tomatoes did. I'm gonna pass on this one. Laser tomato. 
This right here is the most powerful laser that we were able to find on the internet. Um, all right, let's let her rip. Whoa, uh, something's happening all right. Maybe let's try a different spot. Let's see what we can do here. All right, you know, I'm tired of holding this thing. Let's call it. Hello, world. So, yeah, we got a smiley little laser tomato here. Got one eye here, and then other eye is slightly smaller here, and then this sick grin here. You know, I'm gonna call him Thomas. Thomas is not really cooked. But look at that face. Ah, no, no, no. Yeah, it's a raw tomato. Not sure what else to say. It's still really juicy. Sorry, little guy. I'm not sure all this fresh air is good for me. Let's go back to the kitchen. Juice tomato. We got our tomatoes, we got our juicer. We're gonna turn this bad boy on and let her rip. All right then. This is cool, you've got this kind of foamy part and the bottom seems to be a lot thinner and more watery. Mm. It's pretty tasty. You know, it's much smoother and lighter in body than a pureed tomato. Tomato water. Now we're gonna make a kind of fancied up tomato juice. We're gonna quarter our tomatoes, get them into this blender with a pinch of salt, buzz them up, and then pour the puree into a fine mesh strainer lined with cheesecloth. We're gonna pop this in the fridge and let it sit overnight. All right, now that our solids have separated from our liquid, we're gonna pour this out, and that's our tomato water. It's got a beautiful pinky orange color, and it's almost completely transparent. There are a few flecks of tomato solids in there that got past the cheesecloth. Mmm, yum. The tomato flavor here is mild, but really sweet, and the texture is really fascinating. Tomato soda. If we can make tomato water, why not tomato soda? We've got our tomato water, we're gonna plug it into this carbonator and push this button a few times to make it fizz up. Am I doing this right? Ooh, 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 oops. Uh, uh, tomato soda? The operating instructions say not to put anything other than water in the machine, so maybe that had something to do with it overflowing. It's nice and clear looking, but not super fizzy. Mm, it's light, it's fruity, it's more mineral water fizzy than seltzer fizzy. It's interesting, but a pretty disorienting thing to drink. You know, now that we're good and hydrated, let's get a little sunshine. Campfire tomatoes. Ah, the great outdoors. We're gonna take these three tomatoes and put them right in here on the coals to char, and then we're gonna nestle this foil wrapped one right in here, and we're just gonna take these off as they're ready. Foil wrapped tomato. Ooh, steamy. Didn't get much color, but it's definitely really soft. Hmm, nothing too exciting. I mean, it's cooked through, but there wasn't anywhere for the liquid to go, so it just kind of steamed in there. Not sure why I would cook a tomato this way, but it does work, I guess. Charred tomato. So the skin is burnt and just kind of peeling away, and it's definitely fully, fully cooked. Mmm. You know, that's actually really delicious. I was worried that the skin would taste too bitter, but there's a lot of nice smoke flavor, a lot of complexity. Y you know, I want to take this one step further. Let's go back to the fire. Campfire tomato sauce. Okay, we're gonna put a pot right on the fire here, and then squeeze a couple of our charred tomatoes in there. We're gonna add a little oil and salt, and let that cook down a bit to create a sauce. Should be good, let's give this a try. We've got some little bits of that charred skin that didn't break down, maybe not ideal. It's nice and chunky though, really thick. Mmm, the flavor is really delicious. We cooked off some of that water and it's really concentrated with tons of umami. Throw some pasta in there and you'd have a pretty incredible al fresco dinner. Tomato on a stick. Well, if we're gonna cook over this fire anymore, we're gonna need some more wood, so I may as well just use this easel because I'm, let's face it, I'm never gonna be a real artist. I'm never gonna do anything, make a name for myself. Just like my mother always said. Who likes painting anyways? People just love the YouTube, you know? They're just gonna go online and watch these videos and no one's ever gonna wanna see my paintings or anything that I've ever done. This roaring fire brought to you by my deflated sense of self. So we've got a tomato on a stick and we're gonna spit roast it over this fire of broken dreams. And we're gonna see if it amounts to anything. Pretty sure there are some chemicals in that wood that are <coughs> probably poisonous. It's on fire. 
And there she goes. We all saw that coming, didn't we? No surprises here. Let's see if I can salvage even a shred of my dignity. Sense of self-worth. Oh, okay. This, like many things in life, is a real disappointment. It's ugly and messy and dark. I guess I'm gonna have to eat it. Mmm. Tastes like ashes. Both literally and figuratively. Bitterness? Despair? <sighs> you know, I think it's time we went back inside. Tomato ice pop. All right, let's lighten things up a little bit, shall we? So we're gonna put our tomatoes into this blender with a bit of sugar, which will keep the pops from getting too icy and buzz it all up. Now I'm gonna put these into the freezer for the night. And now that they're fully frozen, we're gonna get this into some warm water so it releases. And there's our tomato ice pop. It's interesting, it looks like the tomato water and the solids kind of separated a bit. It certainly smells like tomato. Mm. You know, it's not as sweet as you would expect, and it's a bit icy. I should have added more sugar. It's intriguing, but it would be better if it was like Bloody Mary flavored or something like that. On its own, it's a little bit of a letdown. Tomato granita. All right, let's blend our prepped tomatoes along with a bit of sugar and salt, then strain it, and pour it into this loaf pan. We're gonna put this into the freezer for about an hour. Now that it's mostly frozen, we're gonna use a fork to rough it up a bit and then get it back into the freezer for another couple of hours. Okay, now it's totally frozen. We're gonna rough it up even more and get that granita into a bowl. Beautiful. This looks really pretty. The texture is kind of like a shaved ice. Mmm. The mouth feels really cool. It's icy and refreshing, and it kind of just dissolves on your tongue. It really plays up the sweetness of that tomato. I don't know how much of this I'd want to eat, but it would make a great palate cleanser in the middle of a long summer meal. Tomato ice cream. We've got an ice cream maker. We've got a creme anglaise, which is just a simple French custard made with cream, sugar, a little salt, and some egg yolks. We're gonna pour that into the machine, and we're gonna come back when it's almost frozen. Okay. Now that the ice cream is almost there, we're gonna pour some tomato passata in and let it finish freezing. Then we're gonna get this into a loaf pan and freeze it until it's totally solid. All right, let's make ourselves a little sundae, shall we? Cherry tomato on top, perfect. The texture is a little bit icy and that's just because there's so much water in that tomato passata that we added. It's not super, super smooth. Mmm. The tomato flavor is pretty muted, actually. I think it would have worked way better with tomato paste, but I do think that the sweet floral qualities are coming through. It's interesting, but I think I'd rather have the granita at the end of the day. Baked tomato. We've got a have tomato, and we're gonna pop this into a 300 degree oven for about an hour. And we got a baked tomato. So because it was at such a low temperature, we didn't get a ton of color, but it has shrunken a bit. And it's not super, super cooked inside. It's still a little firm. Mm. The flavor is definitely concentrated somewhat, but I think it could have gone for a few more hours and for sure want some salt and fat. Not that much going on here, but this method has potential. Roasted tomato. Now we have a halved tomato with a bit of salt and oil, and we're gonna put it into a 400 degree oven for about 45 minutes. And out he comes. This definitely cooked down pretty significantly. It's changed color a lot and there's good charring, even though it's still pretty juicy. Mm. That's really, really nice. The flavor is much denser and that char has plenty of complexity that balances the sweetness and acidity. This is a great oven method. Broiled tomato. One more time for good measure. Halved, salted, oiled, and we're gonna pop it under the broiler. Ooh, smoky. <coughs> Ow, all right. Broiled tomatoes. The heat was really intense and direct and the oil produced a lot of smoke. You can kind of see that the skin is sloughing off here and but it still feels very firm. The inside is mostly raw. Mm. Yeah, there's a bit of an acrid kind of smoky flavor going on. The inside is mealy and pretty raw. This would probably be better with a smaller, less dense tomato but didn't work great here. Confit tomato. For my last oven trick, we've got some tomatoes we've halved and submerged in olive oil, and we're gonna put them into a 300 degree oven for about 45 minutes. Voila, confit tomatoes. These are definitely firmer than I thought they'd be after that much time in the oven. This would probably work better with a smaller tomato, but they're really glossy with that olive oil. It's really pretty. Mmm. You know, 
It's super tasty, really rich, and that texture is almost silky. This is a winner for sure. You know, I think I'm finally ready to go outside again. Grilled tomatoes. We got our tomatoes, we got a hot grill. We're gonna put a whole tomato over here, and then a tomato that we've halved, salted, and oiled here, and then some chunks of tomato we've threaded onto skewers here. We're just gonna pull these off as they're ready. Whole grilled tomato. So the skin has split a little bit, and we have some grill marks, but it still feels really firm. I think it's too thick to cook properly this way. Yeah, I mean, it's warm throughout, but it's not really cooked through. Mm. Yeah, not a lot going on here. This is basically just a warmed up tomato. Grilled halved tomato. This definitely looks more cooked, and we've got some appealing charring here, but it also stuck a bit, so I think the most flavorful bits may have gotten left behind. Mm. Okay, okay. A little bit of that caramelized flavor we like, sweetness, complexity, all that, but just not that much of it. It's not bad, but not that distinctive either. Skewered tomatoes. These pieces feel pretty universally soft, and they've got some color around the edges, but we also lost a few pieces on the grill because the chunks got so soft. Hmm. You know, this actually tastes better than the other two. We increased the surface area, which made them cook more fully and quickly. It's a little bit clumsy, but not bad at all. Let's go back to the kitchen. Gazpacho. There are a lot of different ways to make gazpacho, but my favorite is one that's thin, drinkable, and emulsified with a lot of olive oil. Pinch of salt, add some sherry vinegar for acid, and once it's going, we're gonna stream in that olive oil and process it until it's smooth and matte looking. Beautiful. The way that the olive oil emulsified in there changed the color a lot. It's almost orangey. Mmm. Yum. I love this. It's got nice body from the oil. It's acidic. It's very refreshing. Blender cooked tomato. Now, we're going to use the heat of this high-powered blender's motor to cook our tomatoes. These have been blanched and peeled. We're going to prep them, get them into our blender, and let that run for about 10 whole minutes. Ooh, steamy. Blender cooked tomatoes. This is pretty hot after being in the blender for that long. The motor generates so much heat. It's definitely aerated, it's kind of foamy. Mm. I mean, it tastes like slightly cooked tomato. If we had some garlic, maybe a little cream or butter, we'd have a proper soup. Not bad, but more of a starting point. Microwave tomato. We got our tomato, we got our microwave. We're just gonna stab this a few times to let some steam out when it cooks and pop it in there for about four minutes. Hmm, okay, let's put it in for another round. And a uh, microwave tomato. It burst a little bit, and some of the liquid leached out here. Hmm, I mean, it seems pretty unevenly cooked. Some really soft parts and some still quite firm. Hmm. I mean, it's just a hot tomato. Not sure why I would do this, but I'm not offended by it. Iron tomato. We've cut our tomato in half. We're just gonna spray our iron with a bit of Pam. Just sitting in my hotel room, needing to cook a tomato with whatever I've got. Well, I guess this is done? Definitely got some unevenness in terms of the coloration, but we did get some browning right around here. Oh, yeah, it's still pretty raw. Mm. I mean, I'm liking the flavor that the browning offered, but this is just a mostly uncooked tomato. Sous vide tomato. We have an already blanched tomato. We're gonna season it, suck all the air out of this bag, and then this immersion circulator is gonna cook it at a consistent 140-ish degrees for about 45 minutes. And she's done. Fascinating. So the tomato seems fully cooked throughout, but also really firm. The flesh was kind of compressed and is a lot denser. And a lot of the liquid has just kind of leached out here. Mm. This is really cool. The flesh is really meaty, and the flavor is denser and more concentrated than I would have expected. This has a lot of potential. I'd love to see how it would taste if we added a marinade or spice mix or something like that to it. Slow cooker tomato. We're gonna get this lid off, put our tomato right in here, and then add about a cup of water just to get it going. Turn this bad boy on, and we're gonna let it go for about four hours. <laughs> yep, that's cooked all right. The whole thing feels really soft, and it definitely darkens somewhat. It's still very juicy. Hmm. I mean, it's very tender, but it just kind of tastes cooked. It would make way more sense to use a slow cooker to cook down a passata or something like that. But with a whole tomato, it's just kind of silly. Canned tomato. We've got three tomatoes that we've already blanched. We're gonna core these, get them into our jar, add a bit of salt and lemon juice, close it up, and get it into this pot of hot water so it'll seal. All right, it's been 45 minutes. These tomatoes are definitely canned. All right, let's get it open. Yep, 
Yeah, we're really just looking at whole tomatoes floating in their own liquid. They've fallen apart somewhat, but they're mostly intact. Mm. You know, that's actually way more flavorful than I'd expect. Way better than grocery store canned tomatoes. None of that tin can flavor. I'd love to use this as a base for a pasta dish or a braise. Yum. Tomato brulee. Well, you can brulee a grapefruit, why not a tomato? We're gonna sprinkle our tomato halves with some sugar, then use our culinary torch to blast them. Oh, that's gets getting crispy. Well, looks brulee to me. We managed a pretty handsome crust here, and it really smells like caramel. The tomato underneath is almost totally raw. Let's cut a little piece. Mm. Interesting. It's obviously super sweet. There's also a strong savory note from where the tomato juice is caramelized along with the sugar. It's not bad exactly, but definitely an unexpected flavor situation. Not sure if I like it or not. Tomato to tan. This dish is traditionally made with apples, but why not tomatoes? Smear butter in this cast iron pan, pour a layer of sugar over, and arrange our prep tomatoes. We're gonna turn the heat on and let the sugar and tomato juices cook down to a caramel. Now, we layer some defrosted puff pastry over top, tuck it in, make a few slits, and pop that into a 450 degree oven for about 24 minutes. Gorgeous. All right, all we have to do is put this plate on top, and try to flip it out in one fluid motion. Hey, not too shabby. This kind of smells like a dessert pizza. Mmm. This is really special and different. It definitely plays up the sweeter side of the tomatoes, and this buttery pastry really rounds things out. Super cool. Pickled tomato. Okay, let's put our prep tomato slices into this jar. We're gonna add some salt and sugar to this hot vinegar and water mixture and stir it to dissolve. We're gonna pour that over, close it up, then we're gonna fridge this until it's cold and pickly. Right, let's pop that lid off. Mmm, smells nice and vinegary. Mmm, yum. The sugar and the vinegar really back up the natural sweetness and acidity of the fruit, so it tastes really tomato-y. I couldn't eat a whole plate of these, but they'd be great with cheese or to chase a shot of cold vodka. Fermented tomato. Now that we've pickled a tomato, we're gonna try to ferment one. We're gonna core it, dice it, mix it with some salt, and then put it in a bag and seal it. We're gonna let this sit for a few days at room temperature while the friendly microbes and bacteria in there do their thing. Wow, okay, so we can tell that these have fermented because the bag is puffed up, which tells us that the little guys in there have been converting sugar to acid and CO2. We're gonna cut it open. Ooh, that smells wild. That smell is crazy. It's really yeasty and funky, which I find very appealing, but others might find gross. The tomato pieces have broken down somewhat, almost as if they've been cooked. Let's give this a taste. Mm. Wow, 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 wow. Wild. It's funky almost fizzy with a kind of sour, malty, beer-like flavor. Big umami energy. It almost tastes fruitier than it did before. This has a ton of potential. I'd love to see what this would be like in a tomato sauce. Tomato caviar. Science time. All right, we got some tomato juice here, and we're gonna whisk in some sodium alginate, which is gonna thicken it. We're gonna let this chill for a few hours. Now it's really thick and jiggly, almost like ketchup. We've got some warm water here, and we're gonna mix this calcium chloride in until it dissolves. Then we take the syringe, slurp up some tomato business, and start adding a drop at a time to the water bath. They're kinda looking more like tadpoles than beads of caviar, but I guess that's something. So here we have our tomato, quote, caviar, unquote. I mean, it only barely looks like caviar, but the beads are definitely firm and have formed a bit of a skin. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it honestly just tastes like tomato juice, but has a kind of spongy texture. This is more of a gimmicky molecular gastronomy thing than anything else. I'll pass on this one, thanks. Tomato aspic. A little 1950s dinner party throwback for you. We're gonna bring some tomato juice up to a simmer to reduce it slightly. Meanwhile, we've got some cold water here, and we're gonna whisk this gelatin in until it's fully dissolved. Then we're gonna spray this bunt pan with Pam so our aspic doesn't stick. Then stir our gelatin mixture into the hot tomato juice and pour that into our bunt pan. This is gonna need to sit in the fridge for a while to set. Okay, so you can see that our aspic firmed up nicely. Now comes the tricky part. We're gonna set it into this bowl of warm water so that it hopefully releases from the pan. Put a plate over top and boom, tomato aspic, who's hungry? J-E-L-L-O. This looks nuts. It's so bouncy and freaky looking. Can you believe that people used to actually serve this? Mm. You know, 
It actually tastes pretty good. The texture is weird as all hell, but if I really leaned into it, I would love this with a plop of cottage cheese right there in the middle. This is definitely a way to cook a tomato. All right, today we prepared tomatoes just about every way we could think of. What did we learn? Well, for one, tomatoes have a wide range of complex flavors and different methods played to their different strengths. We also learned that tomatoes contain a lot of water and some of our favorite ways of cooking them were all about concentrating them as much as possible. Have a method that you didn't see here today? Leave it in the comments.